Hello everyone, this is Mohammed. I'm back again with another STM32 video and today's video is going to be about the STM32 F4 Discovery Motion Sensor uh, which is a 3-axis accelerometer on the Discovery board uh, and in today's video I'm going to share with you a very simple library implementation that allows you to read the raw accelerometer data uh, the process data and allow you some calibration mechanism so let's get started and what we need to do first is that we need to look at the user manual of the discovery board uh, just to see the pinouts of the uh, MEMS sensor and we can clearly see on the schematic that it uses SPI1 for the communication uh, which is PA5, 6 and 7 um, and PE3 uh, is the chip select line and PE0 is the data ready interrupt all right so let's get started let's open Cubemix uh, we need to click on your project and let's select the right board um, using the STM32 F4 discovery um, F4 discovery board okay um, and first thing we need to do here is that we need to clear all the pinouts and enable the uh, pins we need so we first need SPI1 for the sensor communication and set it to full duplex master and that indeed got mapped to PA5, 6 and 7 just like what we need and now we need to enable a chip select line which as you saw was on PE3 according to the schematic so we need to enable PE3 and set it to GPIO output and I'm also going to give it a label I'm going to call it MIMS CS chip select pin and we need to enable PE3 and set it to external interrupt. So click on PE, uh, PE0, sorry, and set the mode to external interrupt line zero. All right, great. Um, I'm also gonna enable the LEDs on the board as well. Uh, might, might need them for debugging purposes. So PD12, 13 and 14. Um, and let's enable the uh, uh, the onboard push button to set it to GPIO input. And now we're set up. So we've got all the SPR enabled, a chip select line, and an interrupt line. So a quick look on the clock configuration. Um, I'm going to use the internal oscillator, 25 megahertz. That's absolutely fine. So let's go to the configuration on SPI. Uh, I'll just reduce the board rate of the SPI line. So I'm going to set a prescaler of 8 just to make sure the board rate is below 1 megabits per second, which is not a big issue for the accelerometer device, but I like to keep a safety margin. All right, and click OK. Uh, and now we need to enable our external interrupt that we just um, mapped out on the pins, um, but we still need to enable it. So go to conf configuration uh, under NVIC, nested vector interrupt controller. Um, look for XTI line zero interrupt and we need to check this okay and click OK now we're set up uh, click on generate source code icon now we're ready to give the project a name I'm gonna call it LIS 3 DSH uh, the name of the MEMS sensor uh, perhaps tutorial uh, and I'm going to store it at this location and I'm, my ID is Kyle Microvision um, 5 and um, click OK. All right. Uh, and for any of my business contacts, you can get in touch with me through my own company's website. OK, and once the source code is generated, click on Open Project and this will take you to your uh, selected IDE. Um, and on Kyle, the first thing we need to do is that we first need to copy the um, library files to our project location. So I'm going to include a link down the description for the library H and C file, these two files. Um, you need to copy them to your project location. So here is my project, just generated QMX project location, and I'm going to put the file into the MDK ARM folder. So navigate there and um, copy the files into here. And these are the uh, accelerometer sensor C and H file that I'm going to share with you uh, down in the description of the video. All right. Now, having copied the library files, we can go to the Kiel project and add them to the project. 
So an application user right click and add existing files to the group. And here we need to add the C file to the project. One more thing we need to do is that we need to add a path to the library H file. And to do this, we need to go to options for target, um, this C, C++ and include path. Add a new path and click on this uh, button. And we need to add the MDK ARM folder path um, in order for the project and compiler to see the library H file and click OK. Now we're ready to go, so open your main and open the library C file and we need to copy the library header file into our main. Okay, and now let's just compile the code, make sure everything is okay, and we're going to get back and continue with the code. All right, perfect. Um, project compiled without any errors. Now, uh, first thing we need to do here, now navigate to the library header file. And the first function we need to call is the uh, sensor initialize function. And this takes two parameters. It takes the SPI handle and it takes a, an initialize type diff for the sensor. So copy this function to the main and we need to call it right here on bigger number two after all the initialization is done. The first parameter this one takes is the SPI handle type div, which is SPI one handle um, defined by Cubamix. Uh, we need to pass this as a pointer. And the second parameter is the is a um, is an initialize type div. So right click on this, go to definition. And this will take you to here. So we need to define a variable of this type, and it contains some configuration parameters for the accelerometer such as data rate, full scale, anti-aliasing bandwidth, um, uh, the enabled axes and the interrupt enable. So copy it. We need to define a variable of this type in our main. Um, put it in here. I'm going to call it my accelerometer um, config diff. And we need to set the parameter into this. So first parameter say the data rate and you can find the data rate defined in the H file. So let's say we want to read data at 12.5 Hertz data rate. So I'm going to copy it and set it to the data rate. And the second configuration parameter is the, is the full scale. So we want the scale or the range of the sensor to be say plus or minus 4G and G is the unit of gravity. 1G is equivalent to 9.81 meter per second square acceleration. And the next parameter is the uh, anti-aliasing bandwidth. I'm going to set this to um, 50 hertz bandwidth. So I don't want the accelerometer to uh, update really fast. So 50 hertz is enough so that I can remove the high frequency noises. Um, the fourth parameter setting is the enabled axes. So in here, I want to enable all the axes. So back to the library H file, and you will see um, some constant defines. So I want to enable X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to copy this and put it in here. And the last configuration parameter is the interrupt enable. So uh, at this first part, I'm going to use boiling method. So I'm going to disable the interrupt. And in a few minutes, I'll enable the interrupt and I'll show you how to use interrupt too. So I set it to false for now. And now once I'm done with the with setting the parameters, I can pass this type diff into the initialize function as a pointer. And that will implement those configurations. Okay, and having initialized the sensor, I'm ready to use the sensor. And in polling method, I first need to call a function called a poll for data ready. I need to give it a timeout. And when this one returns true, then data is ready and can be read by one of the get uh, data functions. So we first need to pull for a data ready. I'm going to put this into the infinite while loop uh, with an if condition. So if the pull for ready data, I'll give it a timeout of one, one second perhaps. So if this one is equal to true, then data is ready. I can read my uh, data. And now I can call the git um, data scaled, for example. So this will return you data in um, in G format, G unit of gravity. Uh, but on the other hand, the git raw data will just return you the unsigned 16 
um, or the sine 16 data. But for now, let me read the scale data. So I need to call this. And this function returns a type diff of data scale. Right click and go to definition. And this will tell you exactly what this consists of. So I need to define a variable of this type. It's just a type diff structure. Um, I'm going to put this globally for me to see it. Uh, for me to be able to read the variables in debugging mode. So I'm going to define a variable of this type. I'm going to call it um, my data. I have a very simple name. And then I'm going to set it to the return of this function. And this will be a type diff structure with the x, y, and z reading. So x and y and z. All right. So I don't need to set them like this, but I just want to read them in debugging mode. So what I'll do is I'm, do, I'm just going to blink an LED here whenever a data is ready. So GBI or toggle bin. I'm going to toggle the green LED, for example, GPI open 12. Uh, whenever I get a data ready. All right, that's it. So let's compile the code and load it to the board. And we're going to have a look at the uh, debugging mode to read the accelerometer readings. All right, compile without errors. Now loading it to the board. And straight into the debugging mode. Uh, and on debugging mode, I first need to add the variable into the watch memory. So I need to add my data variable. Right click, add to watch one, and it will appear down here. Uh, and I need to expand it in order to see the X, Y, and Z values. Um, that type is float and run the code. And here we go. You can see reading on the X, Y, and Z. So and the readings here are in milli G, so milli gravity. 1000 G is equivalent to one unit of gravity, which is equal to 9.81 meter per second square. And I can see now most of the gravity is on the Z axis. Now when I flip the Z axis around, it's on the negative. Uh, when I set it on the x-axis or negative x-axis, I can see the x is getting very close to minus 1,000. I flip it over on the x-axis and it becomes positive. Now the y-axis, the y-axis now is getting minus 1,000. The positive y-axis is a 1,000. All right, so it's working perfect. Although the readings are not extremely accurate, uh, ideally you want to get on the z-axis uh, around 1,000 which is equivalent to 1G or 9.81 meter per second square. Um, so you can use the calibrate function to set those. So first, you just need to note down the maximum on the z-axis and the minimum. And then call a function um, to set those minimum maximum and it will automatically calibrate them. Let me, let me in fact demonstrate this. All right, I just took a note of the minimum and maximum of each axis. So when I flip them over to the minimum side, I get a minimum reading of minus 1000 on the X axis and maximum 980 and so on for the Y and Z axis. So I note down of those values. Now I need to call the calibrate function on the library. So there is a function called X calibrate, Y calibrate and Z calibrate. So and it takes the minimum and maximum of each axis and then automatically adjusts the range to be from minus 1000 to positive 1000. So let me do it for each of the axes. I need to call it in the main, uh, just right after the um, initialization. Um, and the minimum on the X axis was m minus 1000. And the maximum is 980, positive 980. And similarly for the Y and Z. So let's set the calibrate. Now let me compile the code and load it to the board and you will see the difference. Now the axes should be calibrated according to these values. All right, back on the debugging mode and run the code. All right, now on the Z axis, it's uh, about a thousand. And when I flip it over is uh, very close to negative a thousand on the x-axis a thousand and negative a thousand on the negative side and the y-axis so you can see uh, the readings are very improved all right perfect and that's about the calibration now let me show you quickly how you may use the interrupt mode instead of the polling for data ready so to use the interrupt what you need to do first is that you need to set the interrupt enable to true and then 
you need to have a external interrupt callback and you can find it under functions and hull GBIOs and it's the external interrupt callback. You need to copy this uh, function into your main without the weak object and put it down here ideally in bigger number four. And this will get called whenever um, there is an interrupt on the um, on the accelerometer data interrupt line, which as I show was on was on PE0. Alright? And what we want to do is that whenever there is an interrupt, I want to toggle another LED, just an indication that there is a data ready. Uh, I'm going to toggle another LED, say the uh, orange LED in this case, and I'll get my data into the interrupt callback. But ideally, you don't want to do them in the callback. You want to create a flag. So let me do the flag, actually. It's a better practice. I'll call it data ready flag. I'll set it to zero initially. And whenever there is a data ready, the, the interrupt callback should set this flag to one. And then we will check for this flag in the main. So instead of polling for data ready, I'll check if this flag is equal to one. Um, then I'll first reset it to zero and I'll read my data. As simple as this. So let's compile and run the code and we'll see if our interrupt um, actually works. All right, go to the board and back to the debugging mode and run the code. And sure enough, it's working. I can get my data and I can see on the board my LEDs are blinking as fast as the um, data rate I set. So you can increase the data rate if you want the LED to blink faster. Um, I don't think I'm going to record my board, um, but you will see your LEDs blinking according to your data rate. And at the moment, I think they're blinking at 12.5 hertz rate. All right. Um, and that's all about this video. That's all I want to show you. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.